Hello, and welcome back to yet another retro channel. Today's midweek palate cleanser isn't going to be quite what I originally intended it to be. My original intent was to work on this motherboard, get it up and running, and make some repairs to it. This is a motherboard that I purchased from eBay when I was working on creating a sort of mid-range machine, not quite vintage, not quite new, for the purpose of using it as a test bed for other things. And I needed some some particular characteristics such as both floppy and IDE controllers. And uh, I also needed um, both ISA and PCI slots and a faster CPU uh, than would be on, a, on an older machine. But uh, what I ran into was when I went to put this machine together and test it, um, I could not get it to work. I, it didn't matter what I did. I tried, um, you know, I, I put an appropriate CPU in it. I put uh, memory in it and a VGA card, and it just would not post. I bought this machine off of eBay. Um, I bought it knowing that it was damaged. The seller uh, admitted that it was, uh, well, said that it was a, new old stock board, but that it had received some shipping damage. And I'll see if I can show you uh, what that is. It's down here on these two ISA slots. And you can see the damage more clearly here, the crushed damage and the bent pins. Of course, those wouldn't work as is. So my intention was actually to uh, motherboard to post and then replace the two ISA slots. But I wasn't able to get the board to post. Didn't matter what I tried. So I'm in a bit of a conundrum where I need to figure out what to do for this video. And I think what I'm going to do is go ahead and remove and replace one of these ISA slots and uh, give you some tips and tricks along the way for safely uh, desoldering and resoldering on a multi layer PCB. Um, just so you know, I am doing this entire thing in voiceover because for some reason when I recorded the video, it didn't record audio along with it. I don't know whether I had my mic turned off or, uh, or what was going on, but I didn't get audio. So I'm doing this whole thing in voiceover. So forgive me if I get things a little muddled along the way. So the first thing I'm going to do while I'm waiting for my soldering or desoldering station to heat up is I'm going to go ahead and add some fresh solder solder to the uh, ex uh, the pins as they are existing. Uh, what this is going to do, since this board is relatively old, is it's going to um, freshen up the solder. It'll add uh, leaded solder to the existing solder in case it's unleaded. Um, unleaded solder has a uh, higher melting temperature. Uh, this newer solder has a lower melting temperature, so it'll make the process easier as I desolder uh, if, I, if I mix in some new fresh solder with the old solder. You'll probably note as I'm doing this that I have created some solder bridges. Those won't matter because we will be removing all of this solder with the uh, desoldering iron as soon as we're done with this. Next, we're going to use our desoldering iron, the desoldering gun, to remove the solder from each of the pins. Now, don't worry if you don't have one of these desoldering stations. This can be done with either a solder vacuum pump or um, wick, a braid, solder braid, solder wick. It just takes more patience, more time, 
and you'll probably have to reattempt more pins with those methods. As long as you have patience, you can do it with those uh, tools. But uh, if you have access to a desoldering iron desoldering station, I would highly recommend that. It makes this a lot easier. And what we're doing is we are desoldering with a 400 degree desoldering station. Now that's a little more than I would normally use for single or dual layer boards. But since we have to account for possibly more loss of heat through the inner layers of the multi-layer PCB, we need to give it a little more heat. And we also need to use a little more dwell time. We stay on each pen just a little bit longer than we would for a two layer or one layer board. You just have to be careful because heat is not a friend to PCBs. What can happen if you get a PCB too hot is the layers can delaminate from each other, which means come apart from each other. So you may have uh, the layers pull apart in the middle that can damage tracks or traces uh, in those inner layers and cause issues that are very difficult to find afterwards. So it's a balancing act. When you're doing this, you need to use enough heat and enough time to get the job done, but not too much to where you damage the board. Another thing that's important to remember is that as I am wiggling the desoldering gun on each pin, I am trying my best not to press hard onto the PCB itself. I'm trying to stay mostly on the pin and the solder because you can scratch the board, you can uh, scrape up pads or traces that way. So it's, an, it's important to be delicate while you're doing this. So I noticed while I was doing that, that two of the pins uh, didn't clear th uh, thoroughly, probably because they have uh, extra thick tracks attached to them so that they'd, the heat wasn't enough. So I'm going to go ahead and add more solder back to them and then desolder them again. And that should clean up the issue. Now I'm just going to wiggle each of the pins inside the via and make sure that they're loose. If any of them are showing that they still that they're still firm inside the via, I'll again just add another drop of solder onto them and re-desolder them. This pin is still stuck, so I'm going to, as I said, put another drop of solder on it and re-desolder it with the desoldering gun. And now I'll finish checking the rest of the pins. Now that that's done and all the pins move freely, the ISA slot should lift easily from the PCB.
Now I will carefully inspect both the top and the bottom of the PCB to make sure there are no lifted pads or traces and make sure that the area is ready for installation of the new slot. With the area in good shape, I'll now fit the new slot to the PCB. Now I'll tack down two opposing corners with solder. Make sure that the new slot is flush with the front of the motherboard and then proceed to solder the rest of the pins. Notice that I'm soldering this in a diagonal pattern. The reason for that is to keep any one area of the part being soldered from absorbing too much heat. It's particularly important in the case of plastic parts like this ISA slot, but even in the case of chips, you don't want to have a, a hot spot that can damage the delicate electronics inside the chip. As you're doing this, try to remember that you want your solder joints to end up looking like tiny peaks, not little blobs of solder. That's a good solder joint if it looks like a peak from the side. And now we inspect our work, looking for missed pins, solder bridges, or joints that just don't look quite right. If we find any of those, we fix them. And now we follow up with a good clean. I use isopropyl alcohol and an ESD safe brush and then follow up with a rag, more isopropyl alcohol and the brush again to soak up the remaining flux residue. Now, after a final inspection of your work, you're able to move on to the next step of whatever project you're working on. In my case, this would normally have been testing the ISA slot to make sure it worked, but as we couldn't get this motherboard functioning. We're at the end of what we can do for today. Well, remember, I'm no expert at this. These are just the techniques, tips, and tricks that I've picked up over the years and decided I'd like to pass them on to you. I'm sorry the video wasn't more structured with an actual repair of this motherboard and getting it up and running and tested. But as I said, uh, in the pre-work, I was not able to get the motherboard to do anything. Even, uh, even postcodes wouldn't show up. So maybe next week we'll have something better. Um, in the meantime, Keep an eye out for Saturday's video, part 4B of the Epic Commodore 64 Repair-a-thon. In the meantime, if you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If not, you know what to do there too. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and ring the notification bell so that you get notified when, when uh, new videos are, are put online. Um, Feel free to share the videos with anyone that you think would enjoy them. And 
that'll do it for today. So everybody stay safe, stay well. Um, thank you for watching. Have a great day and see you next time. Bye.